Skincare hacks that actually work. Well, hey guys, as you know, there is a ton of nonsense on the internet, well, in general, but when it comes to skincare, you see all of these ridiculous skincare hacks. Anything from rubbing a banana peel on your face all the way to using your own urine as a toner. I'm not making this up. I react to a lot of these wild and outlandish skincare hacks on YouTube Shorts, so make sure you follow those. They typically go live on my channel daily at 6 p.m. But I'll be honest, several of the skincare hacks I come across are legit. They are practical, helpful, affordable, easy to execute, low risk, potentially high reward. So without further ado, here are five internet skincare hacks that are legit. Number one may come as a surprise to you, and that is washing your face with anti-dandruff shampoo, specifically anti-dandruff shampoos that contain the ingredient zinc pyrithione. Zinc pyrithione is the active ingredient in many anti-dandruff shampoos, and it helps to calm down inflammation in the scalp skin, and also helps to reduce the burden of a little yeast that is thought to perhaps play a role in our tendency towards dandruff. So that's how it works for dandruff. But on your face, you can have similar issues going on related to that yeast, namely something that is a cousin or basically the same thing as dandruff on the scalp, and it's called seborrheic dermatitis. Seborrheic dermatitis can look different depending on your background skin tone. For example, it can be comprised of these reddish, greasy patches with an overlying dry, flaky scale. Oftentimes favors like the forehead, the sides of the nose, but honestly, you can develop seborrheic dermatitis on any body site. Now, for people who have a deeper skin tone, it oftentimes actually leads to hypopigmentation, meaning the inflammation from the seborrheic dermatitis takes away the pigment in the skin. Now, there's not a cure for this problem, Really, it comes and goes. It can flare with being stressed out. If you get sick, run down. Oftentimes it gets worse in the winter time, but that isn't always true. It tends to even be more of a problem if you live somewhere that's really humid because that yeast is a lot more comfortable in humid environments. But one way to control any skin problem related to that yeast or help it to be less of a burden, reduce flares, is to utilize zinc pyrithione. And most often you're gonna encounter zinc pyrithione as an ingredient in shampoos. Now shampoos are intended to cleanse the scalp, which is skin. They oftentimes contain a formulation that is such to adequately remove a buildup of sebum and product residue. They can, however, be a little bit on the drying side for your face, but that's not to say they don't work. So how do you use these? Well, you wanna use them maybe in the shower, for example, lather to areas of your face where you get seborrheic dermatitis. Let that lather sit on the skin for a few minutes and then be sure to rinse it all off. Um, it can really be drying and irritating if you leave it on the skin indefinitely. When you get out of the shower, apply a lightweight hydrating moisturizer and that really can help quite a bit. All right, number two, um, is in the wake of a recent trend, and there's one notable aspect of this trend, and that is the use of Gold Bond Moisturizing Lotion on the face. Okay, I like this for a variety of reasons, but some context here. This appears in the viral trend of the skincare trifecta, which I have a whole video reacting to, okay? It's not just the Gold Bond Moisturizer. It has some other players in there, which some of which I am like not so fond of. Um, but anyway, they bring up the use of Gold Bond as a facial moisturizer. Using a body cream or lotion on your face is allowed. It doesn't mean you'll necessarily like the way it feels because body lotions and creams tend to be of a thicker consistency, can feel a little heavy, but it's certainly a reasonable thing to pursue. Gold Bond, as a brand, has many excellent moisturizers. And many of them are free of fragrance and common allergens and irritants. Uh, the one I see people raving about the most in the setting of the skincare trifecta is the Gold Bond Diabetic Lotion, I believe. And that is a great lotion moisturizer uh, for a few reasons. It has urea in it, which can help hydrate the skin as well as soften and exfoliate dry, rough texture. As a matter of fact, 
If you watched my video on how to get rid of stubborn skin texture, I believe I mentioned the use of urea moisturizers. So there you go, Gold Bond. And you also have oat in there, which has got anti-inflammatory compounds, hydrating compounds, very soothing, shea butter to help reduce water loss. But honestly, Gold Bond has a lot of other excellent moisturizers as well. I love Gold Bond Pure. Uh, also, I'm a huge fan of the Gold Bond Eczema. And then of course, the Age Renew Retinol Face and Body Lotion with retinol as well as urea. Yeah, Gold Bond is good stuff. Try it out on your face. Or whatever body moisturizer you're using, Give it a try on your face. If you don't like it, go back to using a dedicated facial moisturizer. There are many fantastic ones out there as well. Speaking of facial moisturizers, this is a hack that is currently trending. Using the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm on your nose for sebaceous filaments. Yes, this definitely can help improve the appearance of sebaceous filaments. What are sebaceous filaments? Sebaceous filaments are essentially fine thread-like projections coming out of the pore, most prominent on the nose, because that's where we have a lot of large oil glands, a collection of dried oil plus dry dead skin cells. And people are really bothered by the appearance of these, and I have videos on how to get rid of them, but consistently moisturizing can really help to not only dislodge them just by applying the moisturizer and gently exfoliating them away, but it hydrates up the skin and reduces the accumulation of dry cellular debris. Just by improving water content and skin's outermost layer, you get an improvement in skin cell turnover that ultimately can help reduce the accumulation of collections of dry stuck together skin cells. So 100% makes perfect sense. Do I think that it is a unique outcome to the Cicaplast Balm per se? No, I think you could achieve a similar bang for your buck using, well, even the Gold Bond moisturizer that we just talked about. Many of them contain urea, which can soften, hydrate, and exfoliate any kind of buildup like that. The La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm is one of my favorites. It contains dimethicone, a skin protectant that is attractive for people who have oilier skin because it mixes well with the skin surface lipids so that it doesn't feel greasy or heavy. It's a lot more lightweight in consistency. This particular balm also contains compounds from Centella, which are anti-inflammatory and may help facilitate healing as well as barrier recovery. It's a great product, I'm a huge fan. At the end of the day though, if you are bothered by sebaceous filaments, yes, consistently moisturizing your nose can certainly help. I think it's something that people who have a tendency to make sebaceous filaments might shy away from because they might perhaps believe that the oiliness is making their skin moisturized and that if they use a moisturizer, it's gonna make their skin even oilier. And that's not the case. Oil production and barrier function, they're not necessarily tied to one another. Like the oil gland doesn't make more oil when your skin gets dry, that's a common myth. They're kind of doing their own thing. So using a moisturizer can help improve water content in the skin, and ultimately that helps with cell turnover so you don't get that accumulation of those little threads. A lot of this video is focused on moisturizing because it's aside from sun protection, it's like one of the most effective things in a routine. I mean, it really does offer quite a bit for many people. And the next one is the moisture sandwich. What the heck is that? It's essentially what it sounds like. You apply a layer of a maybe lightweight moisturizer, then you apply retinol or a prescription retinoid on over it, and then you apply another layer of moisturizer, sandwiching that active ingredient in there. The goal here is to reduce irritation from something like retinol, if that's what you're using in the sandwich. Um, and it also helps to allow you to tolerate the ingredient better cuts down on peeling, dryness. Now, I get a lot of questions. Will a retinol or a prescription retinoid work if you apply it over a moisturizer? It certainly will, um, except if you are applying it over something like petroleum jelly, 100% petroleum jelly, 
or that La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm, something that is marketed as a skin protectant probably is going to significantly limit penetration of retinol, for example, into the skin because that's what those products are formulated to do to, to help protect the skin and limit penetration of things. But lotions and creams, they do allow for adequate penetration of retinoids. We have research studies showing this, that people who apply moisturizer before retinoid, they get the same outcome in terms of benefit at the same rate, but they also have better outcomes in the sense that they have less dryness and irritation. There's even a recent study that came out supporting this in the psoriasis literature showing that whether moisturizer was applied before or after the retinoid tazeratine made no difference in terms of clearing and improving the psoriasis. And that's really saying something because if you know anything about psoriasis, getting things into the plaques of psoriasis is a lot more challenging in comparison to uh, non-plaque psoriasis skin because this, those plaques they're you know, thickened, so penetration is even more challenging. So that really says a lot, that putting the moisturizer on there first does not really change things. Um, so the moisture sandwich is something that is definitely helpful uh, overall. Do you need to do the moisture sandwich? Can you do a, a moisture open-faced sandwich? Sure, where you just do moisturizer, then retinol, absolutely. Using a moisturizer along with retinol, no matter the order, can certainly help. Whether you choose to put it on before, after, or sandwich, there are multiple ways to skin a cat, as they say, another phrase I don't like. Like, who's out here shaving a cat? Although, honestly, as I go off on a tangent, some cats actually you do shave, right? Like, otherwise they get matted, okay. I am not, not a pet groomer, uh, not an expert in the care and keeping of animal fur. All right, moving on, also in the realm of, of moisturizing, my final hack that I encourage you to try, okay? Nail slugging. So slugging in general is the trend of applying an ointment as the last step in your nighttime skincare routine to kind of seal in hydration. You can use plain petroleum jelly, aka Vaseline, or you could use something else like CeraVe Healing Ointment or Aquaphor, those are ointments, okay? Skin protectants, as a reminder, those are gonna limit penetration of things into the skin, that's why they come last. And a lot of people enjoy doing that, it benefits them in terms of improving skin hydration. Doesn't work out for everyone, but when it comes to the nails, using plain petroleum jelly or you know Aquaphor or, or CeraVe healing ointment if that's what you like and happen to be using, to the nails can really help quite a bit because what it does is the same way it's helping with the slugging on your face, it's helping to protect the skin around the nails, especially that proximal nail fold, um, and it helps keep the cuticle hydrated and healthy and ultimately improves barrier function at those sites. And the end result is really what you're doing is by, by better barrier function and by protecting the skin there, you are helping limit penetration of moisture, like water in other words, and potential microbes back up under that skin to have access to the germinative matrix, which is the area of the nail unit where you have these cells that are rapidly dividing to grow your nail plate. And when you have an unhealthy barrier, like a lot of irritation around the nail, around the cuticle, for example, or you push back your cuticles aggressively, you trim them, that allows for air and water to get up under there. It can lead to nail ridging. Also, if you're someone such as myself with a history of atopic dermatitis and you get these hand breakouts from time to time called dyshydrotic eczema, miserable to deal with, let me tell you, consists of these little little water blisters, as people refer to them, uh, that come on the, the palms, the sides of the fingers, itch like none other, then they'll often erupt and leak out this clear fluid that is also very itchy. Well, all that inflammation from the hand eczema, it impacts the skin around the nails, and it is not uncommon for you to start noticing ridging of the nails when you're dealing with frequent bouts of 
hand eczema. Um, in fact, if you're someone, you know, hand eczema typically happens on both hands, uh, but you may notice that it predominantly impacts one hand, especially if you, you touch things more with that hand that set off your hand eczema. And so you may start noticing, why is it that just a few nails on this hand are starting to ridge? It's probably, you know, related to the hand eczema. All that to say, the petroleum jelly around the nails can really help that to heal to go away. And also petroleum jelly to the rest of your hands can help with healing the, the hand eczema and getting it to, to calm down and go away. I do have a video all about hand eczema. So if that's something you deal with, maybe you, know, you are like a nurse, you work in healthcare, you're touching stuff, washing your hands all the time, wearing gloves in and out and in and out of gloves. Uh, yeah, it definitely can incite violence, so to speak, on your hands and lead to hand eczema, something a lot of people in you know, various occupations, not just healthcare, really struggle with. Hairdressers, uh, food handlers, you name it. So check that video out. But yeah, uh, as far as nails, the nail slugging thing really can make a difference. And also a lot of women, um, you know, over the age of 40 start to deal with what's called the brittle nail syndrome. Some of that can be related to, uh, you know, just lifestyle things like frequent uh, re-wetting of the hands, uh, but also may be related to just age-related changes. And with brittle nail syndrome, it's just as the, the name describes, the nails become brittle. They also start growing a lot more slowly and become prone to splitting, that's called onychoschisia, and then to, to breaking. Very frustrating to deal with. The petroleum jelly around the nails, the nail slugging, can make a huge difference. And it's like a really cost-effective thing to do because you, can, you don't have to buy name brand Vaseline even. You can buy you know, petroleum jelly at the dollar store the dollar, what is it, the dollar fifty store now? I digress. It, you don't need to spend big bucks and just, you know, even with a little cotton tip applicator around the nails or just smear it on there, whatever you want to do, it really can make a difference for sure. Speaking of nail growth, yesterday I put up a video on my top dermatologist tips for growing your nails. All of the best nail growth tips. Okay, so if you're struggling with your nails, you're gonna wanna check that video out. I'm gonna put it on the end slate, so watch that one next. But yeah, in summary, these are five hacks that actually work. Uh, so I hope this video was informative. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.